How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and oh my god do I have an episode for you guys. We've done ricers versus ricers. I'm not sure if we've ever done import versus domestic ricers. These two different clubs are on a whole different breed of rice. They have whole different styles. It is just amazing the differences and I think today we are going to see which side is the bigger ricer. You guys gotta let me know down in the comments what you think. Are you team domestic rice or team import? import rice we're gonna find out i hope you guys are excited if you have any of these posts and you want me to talk about these cars send them to my gmail at gmail.com also guys we have some new merch you guys have been asking for some new merch for quite some time we got some new merch now and we also have more sick merch on the way keeping it simple we have a new flock of cars t-shirt have a new fresh flock logo on the front and on the rear have all of the stallions in the garage on the back looking extra fly also, why not rock some Boosted Boy merch? Look at that. We got the turbo on your nipple. Why not? With also the garage on the back looking real fresh. All hand drawn by my boy Nick. Check it out, guys. Link in description down below. Use discount code 2021 for 15% off your order. And let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, first car starting with Chevrolet. We got a 2014 Chevrolet Camaro. Dude's asking 11 grand. 11 grand? That's, I mean, if it's an SS, that's a steal. But we already know Ricers never choose the top tier performance model. So, yeah, you're right. It is a V6. And right off the bat, you know, we got the sport sticker. It is the V6 Sport. Didn't know that was a trim level. We got the little baby canards, extra downforce up front. It's dripping. It's dripping in ice. It's dripping in everything. He has uh, anal beads all over the hood. He's got little, like, butt plugs all over the hood. He's got a uh, set of hood pins on the factory hood, which is great. You know, I guess Chevrolet didn't uh, engineer that hood good enough to stay down. Supreme Banner. His butt plugs go all the way across the car. All the way. And it looks like he has some fake halos i've never seen that before they look like fake halos either that or they are the dimmest set of halos i've ever seen sport on the mirror he's got the fender stripes i mean this dude's letting you know hey man i might not have bought the v8 but i do in fact have a huge penis and you can tell by all the mods i did on my car transformers in the form of a v6 like ugh, dude you have the camaro you might as well if you wanted the transformer just buy a yellow one at that point uh, i don't know what the fuck you're doing man it's goth bumblebee at this point okay more dripping uh big wing factory wheels though but he couldn't be bothered to change his wheels although it does look like he's got like some sort of red tiger camo on his wheels must have gotten like 150 headshots with them this ain't a mustang though so i wonder how he did that uh spiky lug nuts ricer classic move right there quick disconnect bumper guaranteed not functional he has no idea what the fuck that's for into the interior a chrome wrapped steering wheel that sounds really fucking annoying but only a ricer would choose that everything on the interior though gotta be red red equals fast and it equals sporty this is the base base model homeboy got the cloth seats at the bottom of the tier list, man. Oh, automatic transmission too. There is no redeeming nitrous. Okay, what's going on here? We, is this real? We, we got to see underneath the hood. If it's real nitrous, then that's that's random as fuck. But he is so far at the bottom, bottom of the tier list. I, nitrous on a V6 automatic boat? I, I don't think that's very uh, very quick either way, dude. Even the SS's of this generation, you know, you're, you're starting with one leg already shot because they just weigh so much. And then you go and do all this bullshit to it. I mean, come on. You got some candy cane fucking louvers. You also have the candy cane interior center console. This dude's on crack. Realistically, this dude is on fucking crack. Anyways, says it's uh, 140,000 miles on it. It's got no problems, no lights at all. 2K dollar nitrous to make the car a little faster. Car sounds amazing loud. <laughs> amazing is, is a weird word to use for something that guaranteed sounds like garbage. Price is negotiable, blah, blah, blah. $11,000 for this fucking gem. It's a good start. Team Domestic has a solid lead right now on the Ricer side. Let's see what else they're bringing to the party. Team Domestic also brought this 2015 Ford Mustang. The Ford Mustang boys, whenever they buy the EcoBoosts or the V6s, they let everybody know it is an EcoBoost or a V6. This guy's trying to blend in, though. He's got, like, the fake hood scoops. Similar 
to a GT, but far from it. Anyone who has ever seen a GT knows that it's not the real shit right there. Racing stripes on an EcoBoost, straight ironic. The interior of these cars, if you haven't been in one of them, they're really nice. Automatic transmission, not the A10 that we know and love. Uh, paddle shifters, though. Gigantic paddle shifters. You gotta have them. Because apparently the ones right where your hands should be at 3 and 9, they're, they're just not in the right place. So you gotta have them at all times. Big wing on the back, stupid decal that is just disgusting. And an aggressive front splitter on top of his factory front splitter. I, th I think the Camaro is for sure the head of Team Domestic Rice right here. The Mustang is a solid sidekick, but uh, he's just not bringing the heavy guns out. We got the wing, we got the decals, but the Camaro was just a straight up piece of garbage. So this guy's claiming it's the EcoBoost premium package. Who gives a fuck? It's an EcoBoost. No one cares. Still on stock wheels though. They can never be bothered to change those. Okay, all right, this one sold, and this one looks like it is from a dealer. You guys are going to be amazed at this. 2019 Dodge Challenger for about $57,000, and right off the bat, you're thinking it's a wide-body scat pack. You're right, it is a wide-body scat pack, and it is a fake wide-body carbon package scat pack that does not exist. They went to AutoZone, put some cheap canards on it. They put some fake carbon fiber vents on it. They put some fake carbon fiber mirrors on it. And they just put everything just that doesn't make any fucking sense. Heavy duty limited SRT from a dealership. A dealership. This is something that a dealership actually is putting in their showroom. And I don't think it's a used car dealership. Just, ba I mean, it might be. It is a 2019. Well, it's sold. I don't know. It's in Vancouver. I don't know what they're doing in the British Columbia. But this is some funky shit. I never thought in my life I would see something like this in a showroom. If this is a used car lot, I get it. But the only thing is, at the same point, then why? Like, why, why, why do you have the fake badges? Why do you have everything on it that just doesn't make any goddamn sense? Team Dodge brought out the big guns. I, they might take the lead on this one just because of all the bullshit. You got fake carbon fiber. You got fake canards. You got the fucking Wolverine scratch marks. You have door stoppers. I don't know if you guys noticed that little detail. They fit in really well on that body line, but he has door stoppers on it like it's some middle-aged dude's car. And then the fake badges on the back, I don't know. This one's trying super hard to look super sick, but it is just failing super hard to anyone who knows anything about cars. I don't know, guys. Dodge or Camaro, which one is going to be the head honcho for Team Domestic? It's a really close call. This one looks like the guy went a little bit overboard, and it just, it's, it's fucking nasty. Anyways, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the competition. But first, let's look at something pretty sick. 2013 Lamborghini Gallardo, $194,000. This is actually a super trofeo. This is a race car. This is not anything that some dude... This is a fucking race car. If you want a race car for the streets, get the super trofeo. This thing is absolutely sick. We're just taking a look at this because it is just going to clear our mind, let us completely recuperate what we just saw, and hopefully just give us a mental flush on all of the bullshit we just saw. This is a real race car, okay? If your race car is looking like this, you're doing something right. If your race car is looking like this, you're doing something absolutely wrong and you need to stop. Yeah, this thing is really cool. If anyone knows about super trofeos, you know that this thing is fucking dope. And uh, all this, functional. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at what Team Import has brought to the table. Ooh, ooh, all right. Bringing out the heavy guns right off the bat. 2005 Nissan 350Z Coupe two-door, about 10 grand for a fake GTR. Why buy a real GTR when you can buy a fake one for 10 Gs? This guy went crazy with it too. Paint matched the bumper. That's something we don't usually see. That is a, an extra point right there. Also, all of those crazy vents. That's a lot of extra horsepower in the Ricer community. The body kit on it too. I mean, if you're looking for some aftermarket, you know, goodies, this is the right way to go. The taillights too, straight off of Wish.com. They look like absolute dog shit. They actually have little Z's in them. That's pretty interesting. I don't know if I would do that. The park bench wing, classic import right there. Classic. And then the offer of wheels. It is just everything you would imagine a Ricer would be. Especially the damn near bone stockness of it. Drew, it's got an intake. Having only an intake on your car is about as useful as just putting like a short throw shifter on your car. It's doing something, but you're not really gaining much from it. Looking at the interior, bone stock. Ain't nobody going to see it, so we don't got to modify it. 43,000 miles, though? That's really not that bad. That is pretty low. So for 10 grand, you get something that is low mileage, but is absolutely fucking hideous. 
What do you guys say? Even though it is low mileage, would you guys be whipping this shit around? Or is it straight to the junkyard with this one? Let me know. Let's see what else they brought to the table. 2013 Toyota Corolla S sedan four-door. About $14,000 on this bad boy right here. And we're looking at what looks like the beginning of a show car. Minus all the show. This, <laughs> this guy forgot his wheels at home or something. I have no idea what's going on. But the color itself, we got this like aqua, you know, grabber blue color, which looks really nice but you're still on stock wheels i know i know i'm sure he sold the wheels separately but it's just like it looks really sad in this state like you're taking all these really cool angles of it but the wheels just kill it it's not really a ricer i know but this is also what the import scene is all about nowadays they love to make their cars look showy and flashy when it's a corolla s sedan is it cool it's a Corolla S sedan. I don't think anyone is really fucking gawking at these. Is it done correctly and done professionally? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you props there. It looks like it's a well done car. I actually like the color. You didn't go too crazy overboard. It doesn't have a chassis metal wing or anything. Not the worst thing ever. It's just a Corolla S sedan. And I don't think anyone really is like, dude, when I grow up, <laughs> I want to have a Corolla S sedan from 2013. That was the year. That was the year to get. I don't know. For sure, a weak hitter in the Ricer community, also a weak hitter in the uh, show car community, but it has potential. Someone buy some nice three-piece wheels for it, and uh, it's a solid contender. As is, though, hey, man, I'm judging what I'm seeing. Imports last heavy hitter. Hopefully, this can bring him back to the top of the Ricer scene. 2006 Hyundai Tiburon GT Coupe. Two-door for $2,000. For sure, the cheapest car of the episode. And let's see why that is. From the first picture, we see some classic, you know, old-school JDM tuner scene shit. We got see-through coolant pipes. We got painted valve covers and intake manifolds, painted inlet pipes. And then we got some bad bitches on the hood. Oh, God. I got one of each my exes up on the hood, man. You see this one? This one, Veronica right here, man. Veronica, she a little baddie, though. Anyways, carbon fiber hood, I think. I mean, got some vents on it but this is straight up early 2000s exhibit pimp my ride shit and that's a decent sized tv this doesn't look like an early 2000s tv though so when was this done it begs the question because that looks like a modern day monitor right there like you could probably call, get some dubs on that shit that is that is some good one millisecond response time for sure anyways cool little flame decal going down the side it just this car looks like it was born in 2006 but it was modified and done in 2016 because it's just it looks too new everything about this car although it is very ugly it just looks too new NRG steering wheel interior doesn't have anything really crazy going on we have some air sprayed fucking uh, trim pieces but besides that the interior is very bland all of the money for sure went underneath the hood making it look clean and in the paint job but for two thousand dollars that is pretty ridiculously cheap and you know that this thing pulling up the car meets is still going to pull some crowds. I mean, it might not be for the right reason, but attention is attention. If you like it, you like it, you know? Anyways, his description says it has a vertical doors, custom pretty much everything, as you would expect. But again, two grand? That's a uh, fuck. Even if it has 36,000 miles on it, that's nothing. Never mind. He's asking 20K or best offer. Okay, for that price, buddy, you're going to have this car until the day you die. That, I don't think anyone's going to spend 20 k for this thing. I mean, you got to find the right person. Let's just say it's going to sit for a while. Anyways, not really a crazy ricer car as well. I feel like the import scene this episode did not bring their A gain. We did have a fake GTR, but the Corolla S and the Tiburon were both just show cars and didn't bring their A game this time. I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe the import scene isn't as rice as the domestic scene. But then again, every Eco Boost and V6 guy out there always has something to prove. So maybe that's what it is. It's like little man syndrome. You buy a V6, you got to prove to everyone that you don't need the V8 to have fun. You got to prove to everyone with the Eco Boost that it's just as fun and you're just as much car guys the guy with the gt you gotta prove to everybody i don't know let me know your guys's comments down below what do you think one i think the best ricer of the episode was probably the camaro this guy was off the charts with all of the rice the anal plugs all over it the supreme banner all the sports stickers this guy was on a whole different level the nitrous bottle was a little curveball at the end but I think this guy for sure won the battle. On the import side, it's pretty clear too. The 350Z fake GTR. I mean, if you're going to buy the base model 350Z and then try to make it look like a GTR, Nissan's top tier fucking high performance car, you have some issues and you are for sure compensating for something. So let me know what you guys think though. Comment down below which car was your favorite. I think Team Muscle won the Ricer battle this time. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And until next video, peace.